What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I'm going to be talking about the SPY, the NASDAQ, the QQQs and the indices, break down what the charts are telling us what you should be watching for going forward and also talk about the big economic data and also the very very big earnings coming out very very soon which are going to be super important for the markets. And before I break anything down about what my price predictions uh, would be for the markets, before I talk about all these different charts and how they're playing out so far, I do have to mention a couple of things before starting. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner. I'm sure you take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. And the last thing is, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo Moo link down below in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo, Moo, the link down below, and deposit $100 into the account, you're guaranteed up to five free stocks, each worth up to $2,000. And the best part is any could be a free Tesla share. The offer ends in just 12 hours. Check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. Spy had a monstrous rally again on Friday, which was actually very, very ironic. However, I was open to any possibility depending on how the market would respond to Amazon's earnings and also the PCE reports. And if anything, the market ended up just continuing to squeeze thanks to market makers absolutely annihilating the shorts again. But the real question is, will this continue going into this week? Will we see the market continue to rally or are we about to see the market cool off first? And that's going to actually uh, heavily depend on some very important data. Now, firstly, please remember, guys, on Monday, we have the PMI data coming out. This is going to be coming out 15 minutes and then 30 minutes after the market opens. This will actually help us understand how consumer spending is looking, what's going on with manufacturing. So we're going to see a big reaction to the markets during this time. For Tuesday, we have some jolts data that's very important. And then Wednesday, we have the FOMC meeting. That's going to be very, very important at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. So make sure you're ready for the FOMC meeting. It's going to be huge. Next to everything, we'll react to it, so make sure you're ready. Then for earnings, we have SoFi and a couple of other things. We have Uber, AMD, and Ford for Tuesday. Wednesday is just CVS and a few others like Etsy and WWE. Not as big. And the really big day is going to be Thursday because we have Lyft. We have some uh, oil companies, some energy companies. We have Coinbase, Shopify, and finally, Apple. Apple is going to be massive. The market's going to react in a massive way to this to the biggest company in the world and it's going to cause lots of volatility the big reaction is going to happen on friday when we have some smaller earnings coming out on that day so make sure you are ready for that and prepared and finally i just want to note that when you look at spies options chain uh you will notice that we had about a million puts expiring on friday and we had a 2.04 put to call ratio at 409 being max pain we could have actually crashed or saw a big rally. It had to be one of those two. Uh, and we ended up getting a big rally. Why? The market makers, uh, they use PCE as an excuse to pump the market super, super hard and just absolutely annihilate the shorts. That's the first thing. The second thing is you have to look at the PCE data that came out. It was actually pretty decent in, in line with expectations and et cetera. And that's part of why the market held up quite nicely. Now, for this week, I just want to note that we have about a little over 800,000 puts expiring with less than 360,000 calls expiring. So a 2.26 put to call ratio, 409 being max pain. The odds are favoring. Uh, maybe the market will pull back this week, but we might get another push up by the end of the week. It's a little bit more likely again. I, I am saying this from based off the options standpoint, based off what market makers want. But once again, that will depend on Apple as well and also the FOMC meeting. Those are going to be two of the biggest catalysts. Now, let's talk about the charts. What am I seeing on SPY? I see a problem with SPY, and that is the fact that it's actually very overbought in a way. I mean, it pumped very, very hard as it hits these high levels. It does tend to cool off a bit. So what I'm thinking is resistance happens to be at 416 around that zone. And if it breaks that, then 418, we have some heavy resistance up here. So my best prediction would be it either pushes up a little bit more and then it ends up just pulling back in a very healthy way for Monday and Tuesday. Uh, we see just lots of sideways choppy price action, maybe a slight pullback, completely normal, completely healthy. It's not going to be like a crash, just a, a bit of a pullback. And then we should see a massive reaction after FOMC. It might actually cause the market to continue going, right? We could even 
continue to pump. There's no true indication of this pump ending, but I am seeing some signs that we should just cool off a little bit based off how overbought we are. So that's what I am essentially seeing. We also have a bearish divergence developing on the QQQ. So my best prediction for SPY would be us pushing up just a little bit more, trying to get to about 416 or so, and we might just start shopping around here. And somewhere, we, we're likely going to see a rejection either Monday or Tuesday, probably tomorrow. Bit of a pullback, completely fine. A retest of 414. It could be very, very slight and very healthy. I would be completely fine with it because, once again, we're reacting to the very big news, which is going to be uh, the big, big FOMC meeting and earnings. Now, what else is not a good sign for the markets is the QQQ has a bearish divergence on the one-hour time frame on the RSI. RSI is making a lower high while the price made a higher high by close. That's once again suggesting that the market might actually reverse a bit. Completely fine. Let me just actually add the extended hours too because I like to do an analysis of both of these things. Uh, when you include the extended hours, we also have a bearish divergence. Once again, the price was just making higher highs, but the RSI is making lower highs. It's actually diverging right here. So that's telling me, and the same thing is happening on the MACD, by the way. That's telling me we might actually see the market cool off a little bit first, hold up for a while. I'm not saying it's going to crash. It's a very healthy pullback. And then we're going to see a big reaction to FOMC. Maybe it could cause a rally. We'll see. Uh, but what I'm seeing is the market may be pushing up a little bit more, getting a slight push up and then getting the pullback. That's what I'm going to be watching for. Uh, let me just talk briefly about just a couple of stock stocks, guys. I can't really talk for much longer. Uh, for Tesla, if we're bullish, it has to break 166. If it breaks it, it could actually test 170. If we're bearish, it's going to retest 163. If that fails, 160 is going to come. Now, overall, the trend looks bullish on Tesla. It's holding up quite nicely. So I would assume that it's actually going to be impacted by the market. So what I'm seeing for Tesla is we have some heavy resistance that's starting to chop around a bit around the 50 EMA on the one hour time frame. Also around heavy resistance near 165 to 166. So for Tesla, that tells me that this thing might actually have some trouble trying to break out very hard unless we get a bullish piece of news. And I'm thinking that Tesla might actually cool off a bit because once again, I'm not really seeing much of a divergence or anything like that. It has nice strength to it, but it is slowing down on the one hour time frame a bit. So what I'm seeing for Tesla is this. I think that it's going to try to push up a little bit. It has some strength, like I said, 166 could be tested. There might just be like a fake breakout and then it just comes down to cool off a bit, cool off its RSI. Uh, you could argue there's a gap down here. Uh, technically, Tesla could come down to about 160, maybe by, uh, I would say, Monday or Tuesday. Just chomp around a bit. I'm not saying it's going to crash. Just chomp around a little bit, then get another attempt to break out by Wednesday, depending on FOMC. Between Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I do think there's a good chance Tesla will try to break out a little bit later, but I think it might pull back first before that happens. Coinbase, relatively weak, down 0.7%. Uh, if this thing could get above one, um, sorry, the 54 area, we could get a retest of the 50 EMA on the one hour time frame at 57. If we're bearish, it's going to end up retesting 50. Now, I'm thinking that based off this formation, I am seeing... I'm not really seeing much of a divergence or anything like that, but we do have a divergence on the MACD. That tells me we might get a bounce on Coinbase very soon. It either is going to just try to come down and then get the bounce, or it could bounce just in a couple of days. But either way, I would be actually looking for a potential bounce soon because it is very close to oversold territory. It just dropped really hard in a short period of time. Uh, I think 50 might be tested first, so it might come down to 50 and then get a bounce. I'm, I think the MACD is telling us that it might cool off a little bit with the market, then get a nice bounce later on. The dollar is still pretty flat, not doing much, so it's not confirming like a very bearish move or super bullish move just yet. Not really doing much. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, guys. So best to just be very patient and see what it does. If it gets a very bullish break, yeah, that's going to be bearish for the markets. So far, it's not doing that. It's pretty flat. For Neo to turn bullish, it's got to break and hold $8. If it does that, we have this gap up here around 8.3 to 8.4 is where we have resistance. If Neo is bearish, it has to actually fail to break $8 and come down to retest uh, this demand zone around the 7.6 to 7.5 area. I'm thinking that it's going to make an attempt to break out because it is actually on an uptrend and we do have a possible uh, uh, amount of strength that is developing. But what I think is Neo might make an attempt to test the 50 EMA, maybe go a little higher, but it might end up failing. 
I think it might get a bit of a rug pull with the markets, just a, a very healthy pullback. And then we're going to react to FOMC later. So it might actually end up coming back down to test 7.6. Microsoft, very, very nice looking setup. It just keeps going and going. Uh, I do believe we have some heavy resistance around this 310 area, and it is actually kind of overbought. So it, it is due for a slight pullback, especially because the QQQ has a bearish divergence. Uh, in my opinion, we might see Microsoft just cool off and get a little bit, bit closer to like 300 first before it kind of holds up and then continues. But until then, a slight pullback would be very healthy. We are seeing some signs of weakening momentum on the MACD. Uh, the QQQ, as I mentioned before, bearish divergence developing so far. We have it on the RSI. Uh, it's also losing some momentum on the histograms, and we are just hovering above the 5 EMA. So I'm thinking we could get a retest of the 50 EMA, just a slight pullback. It either pushes up a little bit more and then it pulls back or just pulls back from here. Very healthy. On either Monday or Tuesday, a pullback should be coming. And then we're going to get a big reaction to FOMC. And also Apple is going to affect it big time too. Amazon, it's looking very interesting. I mean, this is starting to resemble like a head and shoulders like formation. Is it going to come down to fill this gap? It's a real possibility. Uh, it could try to push up a little and then end up coming down, but so far it is forming a head and shoulders. It might come down to about 103 as the market drops. If it's bullish, it needs to hold 105, and it could actually get a breakout to try to get back to 109, but the odds are favoring downside with this weakening momentum, so it's a little bit more bearish looking to me. Uh, it might just cool off and get closer to 100, but it could bounce after FOMC. I want to make that as clear as possible. All right, the last couple I'm going to talk about are just like NVIDIA and Apple. NVIDIA just continued to rip up. It was even, it was even stronger than I expected. Uh, it is hitting or getting very close to heavy resistance around this 280 area, so it might push up a little bit to get close to 280, then reject off that and cool off in a very healthy way. I think it's very likely for that to happen, and it could come down eventually to the 50 EMA on the lower 270s. For Apple, it's also at some resistance, very close to about 170. So this 170 zone tends to be a very big supply zone. I think 172.5 to about 170, we have some resistance in a very big zone. It could actually reject around here. So maybe push a little bit into this zone, chop around a bit, and then end up cooling off. Completely healthy. It might come down to actually test the 50 EMA around 166. Once again, completely fine. Very, very healthy just to start off the week. But it could reverse later on. For Google... For Google, it has some relative strength to it. Uh, it might come up to fill this gap or come very close to doing so. Then it could reject very close to 109. It did get rejected off 109 before, and that is where it has some heavy resistance. 109.63 rejection, 109.59 rejection, 109. Point, what is that? 109.15 rejection. So around this 109 area, it might get a rejection there and then just come down cool off in a very healthy way, maybe come down to test the 200 EMA to fill this gap, completely healthy. Meta is quite overbought, I believe. I mean, it's on fire so far. A uh, very healthy pullback would be completely fine. It could actually come back down to about the 235 area, if not 230. It is, once again, very overextended, so I'm anticipating that. Alibaba, it's pretty tricky to trade uh, based off how it was looking. We did get a bullish breakout, so it could actually continue going. I'm anticipating that it could actually try to retest about 85 to about 86.47, which is where the 50 EMA is. If it rejects off that, which is very likely, I don't know if it's going to try to uh, completely fill this gap or not. It might just come very close and fail. If it rejects, it's going to cool off and get closer to 82 again. So it pushes up and it comes right back down. That's what I am anticipating. The 10-year Treasury yield came down, which was bullish for the stock market, once again acting like normal. But if it does actually end up getting a bounce here, because we do have a possible divergence that was forming let me just double check the divergence uh i think there was a divergence that tried to form uh it's very close actually i wouldn't even count it as a divergence it's just way too close and choppy it almost formed one not really too much so what i'm seeing is it really depends on if this thing can get a bounce off this area if it tries to bounce off 34 which has been a very interesting area of support like right here, it came up, it bounced off this like 34 area, then kept going up. If it bounces and goes up like this, this is going to be bearish for the markets, signaling a slight pullback. If it keeps coming down, maybe the market pumps a little bit more to like just a bit more and it comes down to like 33.75 and then it bounces. So that tells me two possibilities. Once again, 
market's going to likely either just pull back a little bit approaching FOMC. I'm talking very, very short term, by the way. And then we react to the FOMC meeting on Wednesday. Or we get another push up, push up a little bit more, and then we get the cool off. It's got to be one of those two most likely based off what this is telling me from a technical standpoint and also based off the news that's coming out. Maybe the market gets a negative reaction thanks to PMI and we just cool off a bit. We need to cool off our RSIs and then we react to FOMC and Apple's earnings and everything else like that. All right, guys, so that's what I have for this video. I tried to keep this very brief. I apologize if I did talk a little bit too fast every now and then, but I just wanted to do the best I can to give you guys some very useful information. If you want some merch, check it out near the comment section. The code SAFE will save you 5%. And also don't forget about the Moomoo Moo link. Uh, the offer ends in just 12 hours. All right, thank you all for listening. Have a great day. The market to the moon as the long term is very bright. And peace out.